relationship and eventually tried out some drugs and became dependent on alcohol and uh, smoking um, different you know things and pills and lived life in that um, fast lane for about six years and finally um, I came to a point where I didn't want to live anymore because it didn't matter how many friends or how much popularity I had I was still filled with emptiness and loneliness and it was continually nagging at my heart and um, the pain and the shame for my sins were so great that I decided it was time to end my life. So in August in 1998, um, I tried to commit suicide. Um, I picked up an old razor uh, that was left there by someone and I started um, to press it on my left wrist, trying to cut into it. And as I was doing that, um, a voice said, hell is real, don't do this. I pondered for a while to see if that was me or uh, where that voice came from and I just figured it was just my own conscience so I continued to um, press the razor into my left wrist and try to slice, slice my wrist and the voice once again said hell is real and you don't want to go there. After I heard that for the second time, I decided to put down the razor and not pursue that. And I just cried my heart out to God. And I said, God, whoever you are, whatever you are, wherever you are, just please let me die. Please, I don't want to live anymore. I've seen too much. I've seen too much pain, shame, and misery. Just let me die. So for two weeks after that suicide attempt, um, the Lord gave me vivid dreams um, that I was on the run from demons and the demons were trying to devour me. It was like a black uh, wolf, um, you know, seven, eight of them just chasing after me and trying to devour me and the Lord intervened and, and <laughs> thank you God. He kept me. He kept me. And um, the last dream of the two weeks, he showed me that my bedroom was um, in one big inferno. Um, my bed that I was sleeping on was burning. And um, I got up and I screamed, you know, to my live-in boyfriend at the time. And I said, the bed's on fire, the bed's on fire. And we got up and there was no fire. And um, he just thought I was crazy. But it was God. He showed me that, and he also gave me a solemn declaration that um, your sin is despicable to me. And if you do not repent from your wicked ways, you will be consumed like that raging fire. I knew it was the voice of the Almighty. I was scared. Rattling in fears to my soul, but I couldn't stop sinning. I was bound to the power of sin, death, and the grave, the power of hell, the power of Satan. So, as much as I tried to, I could not stop. And the Lord gave me a dream that my brother would show up and knock on my door one day. And he did. A few days later after that dream, my brother showed up. My brother had just gotten born again. He showed up, knocked on the door, and um, he saw that I was continually high, drunk, half-naked, and was not the sister that he once knew. Um, September 4, 1998, in honor of his birthday, I threw um, a birthday party that had a lot of alcohol and um, fresh herb from Mexico and lots of good food. And lots of people came over, my thug friends, and um, as I was high and drunk, um, my brother just followed me around, very grieved in his spirit. But he didn't know what to say, and um, finally, when we had a moment alone together,